Hello everyone and good afternoon and today we are very excited and blessed to have another amazing mother to interview and today we are going to be interviewing a wonderful lady called Laura Akanu and Laura has an amazing story. She is a certified etiquette trainer as well as being qualified as a childcare and playwork practitioner. And she's also previously managed her own childcare provisions. So as well as being a mother of her own children, she's also looked after other people's children as well. Uh, Laura is also the founder of the Polished Manners Social Skills Training and Consultancy Company. And we're going to be talking to her this afternoon about her role as a mother, but also her role as a businesswoman and what she has done to overcome any challenges that we all generally face as mothers in business. So good afternoon, Laura. Good afternoon, Linda. Thank you very much for inviting me to speak today. I'm, I'm very well, thank you. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Good, good, good. So we're really excited to talk to you today and hear, hear more about your story. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Laura. And you're, you know, you're, you're, you're a mother, but tell us about you and your children and your, your setup. Okay. Um, as you said, I'm a mother, to, um, but they are actually two adults now. They're age 26 and 23, um, both university graduates, and they're beginning to find their own way working and pursuing their own interests in life. Um, and I've been married for about 33 years now, uh, which has been a long journey. Um, particularly with bringing up two two young children um, when they were when they were growing up. So my life has been mainly um, it's been basically around my family. Everything I've tried to do over the years has been around my my family in making sure that I give as much time as I can to my daughters. In in, in where, especially when I think about the fact that. The things I went through to actually have them haven't lost lost my very first baby who was a boy, so that really I think helped me to focus on on really making sure that I was as good a mother as I could be and making sure that I was there for both girls. Right. Okay. That's that's fantastic, and thank you so much for that that introduction. And so, you've obviously being a mother, you've gone through various challenges like like we all do. I'm interested to talk to you a bit about your, your work as a child care and playwork practitioner. So was that at the same time as having your children or did that come when they were much older? How did you get into, into that field? Okay, I got into working in child care and playwork um, through the fact that my daughters at the time were quite young and in, in, sec in primary school actually. And I was working a nine to five job. Um, I was actually working for Nestle UK at the time. And what I found was the difficulty to manage the demands of the job with having a family and particularly having two young children. So I really struggled with that, which I think a lot of mothers can probably relate to. And I, there was the element of guilt as well that I felt I wasn't giving them as much time as I should be as a mother. So there were conflicting interests as far as I was concerned. So as a result of that, um, my younger one, uh, my youngest daughter actually was not very well as a child as well. And that was one of my reasons for eventually deciding that I am going to try and run a business of my own. So the, the, the key thing that happened was a day where I'd forced her to go to school. She wasn't very well. She hadn't been well off and on for, for a while. And I did force her to go to school that day because I had a management meeting and I had a presentation and she went off to school. And by 10 o'clock, I remember the phone call coming through that she really was very ill and I had to come and pick her up. And I remember just breaking down and crying. And my manager just said, the work is not that important. The meeting is not that important. Just go and sort your daughter out. Picked her up, went straight to the GP, from the GP, straight by ambulance to a hospital, from there to another hospital, and she had to have an operation. Wow. 
So that it, yes, so that in itself was a real eye opener. And I believe that was the time I made up my mind that no, I fought to have these two girls and something's got to change. So I started looking at ways of earning, um, earning an income, but still being able to manage my day to day life around my children, taking them to school, picking them up from school. So that is really where the idea for the childcare and play work business came about and apart from that over the years for when from even nursery school I would have other friends children during the holidays I would look after them take them to London so it really was a natural progression if I have to be honest in, in saying that someone a friend actually suggested why don't you do this for a living Laura and yeah I, I was a bit dismissive of it but in the end that is what I did so that is how I started off in terms of setting up a play care setting, which I had no idea how to run, but with with um, a bit of research, with some help, I was able to get those started. Mm, that, that's an amazing story. Thank you for that. And and obviously, when you you know when you make those sorts of decisions, you have to be very courageous because, like you said, you, know, you had no no experience, no knowledge of that, that nope. area. But you, yes, but you had to do something different in order to fulfil your role as a mother but also have something for yourself and, and create a business for yourself. So that that's that's amazing. So thank you so much for, for sharing. Thank you. And often as, as mothers, you know, I, I, I talk for myself and I'm sure other mothers can can relate to this, is that, you know, having finding that courage to step out of your your comfort zone is not is not an easy task to do because we like to ensure that everything's in order. We look after everybody. We might not necessarily spend as much time on ourselves as, as we should do. But when you step out of your comfort zone, you then become very vulnerable and you will make mistakes and, and you yes. will be exposed, you know. And so you were very brave to do what you did because not only were you helping your own situation, but you're also helping other mothers by providing a service for them, for their, for their children, so that they could go out to work. Uh -huh. so I think that's, that's... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you. I, I don't, I don't know if I would say it was um, being brave. I, I just knew that I didn't have, as far as I was concerned, there wasn't a choice. And in all honesty, my husband wasn't very keen on the idea because I had a very well-paid job and he couldn't understand me wanting to give that up, that up to go into basically the unknown and you know it's a business you don't know how it's going to work out and things like that but I was very determined about it mm -hmm. I, I definitely um you know I, I I had a lot of fears and insecurities about it but my mind I just went with my mind and yes I, I didn't regret it in the end yeah Yes, and, and that's it, isn't it? It's having that self-belief for yourself. You said you went with your mind. You know, you didn't yes. have other outside conversations or forces to sort of deter you. You knew what your focus was and you just went for it. Yes, and, and thankfully, as I said, it was okay. I was home with them from maybe my eldest was in probably year three at the time, right through to secondary school. I've never... I've always been able to be around for them, whatever was going on, whatever was happening at school. And I really would not trade that for anything. Yeah, because you're, you're, you've got some treasured memories there. which Pl um, Plenty, plenty, a lot of memories. And they still talk about, about it till they, now, knowing that they come home, uh, mummy's there, or I can pick them up, or during the holidays they can go to the, um, you know, play scheme with me. It was just, it was just fantastic. Yeah, it, it, you know the fact that I was able to do that was yeah. really great. Yeah, and I, and I'm sure your words, your words of wisdom, just from that that part of the the interview, will inspire other mothers. You know that were in the situation that you were in before. You know where they're thinking, I need to do something else. I want to spend more time with my children, but I also yes. want to, you know, be more and achieve more. And it's really about being courageous, but being vulnerable at the same time. And, and making a difference. So, yes. <laughs> and so yes. more recently, well, not more recently, but following on from that, then you created another organisation um, with regards to Polish Manners. So you're the founder of, of this, this company. So tell us about that. 
Okay, um, polished manners, um, the, the clue is in the name. It's all about good behavior, knowing how to behave in different um, environments. And again, that business idea all stems again from the young people that I worked with when I was running the after um, school clubs because we, we know and we all say now, oh, young people are so rude. They don't, they're not polite. They don't know how to behave. But it, it wasn't just the children. It was the parents as well. And as I was running the club, I, I, I think my last club, I closed in, well, it wasn't closed, but taken over in 2014. And what I could see was the way the children behaved. A lot of them, they had no regard for anyone or other people. It was just generally their behavior. And we had the situation where with government cutbacks, the schools were looking at ways of making additional income. And one of the ideas they came up with is, okay, rather than having these providers running the clubs for us, we would take them in-house. So gradually, um, each of the clubs was taken in-house by the schools. So I now had to rethink, okay, what, what else can I do? By then I was pretty much in my late forties and I thought I want something that I will be in control of, not at the mercy of anybody else, um, which, which was very key for me. So that's how the idea for etiquette training came through. And I thought, okay, through etiquette training, I could actually help more young people to understand the expectations, if you're part of a society, part of a community, there is a certain way to behave. If you go to certain places, you know, there's to, they're just protocols and rules of behavior, which not everybody seems to be aware of. So that is how the idea for Polished Manners came. And I didn't want to use the word etiquette at all in the name of the company, because once people hear etiquette, I find it puts them off or they tend to think, oh, royal family or that, that sort of thing. But it's really just about basic good manners, good behavior, cultural awareness when you're with other people. So that's basically the story behind Polished Manners. I'm coming up with that name for the company. Right. Wow. Wow. Okay. And so it attracts all ages in terms of your... Yes, it, yes, it does from, you know, young children. I would run classes for children from, say, about age five plus, right up to adults in, in business if they want to know a bit more about networking, when when's the right time to present your business card, um, you know, of, office attire, civility at work, what's acceptable, what's not, if you're traveling and representing your company. And then you go down to secondary school students, um, digital etiquette, we, we talk about interview techniques, um, emotional intelligence, um, knowing how to control how you behave, because that's, you know, that's what part of what I teach as well, yeah. knowing how to control yourself and in, even when you're angry there's certain ways have you know understanding empathy so there's a, a whole lot of topics that can be covered under etiquette training so it's not just about you know table manners and how to hold your cutlery properly that's important as well especially if you're eating with other people but you know there's a lot more in terms of life skills that you can learn through etiquette training yeah okay that's that's fabulous and so how do people get in contact with you if they... Okay, my company, as we said, is Polished Manners, and I have a website. Um, it's www.polishedmanners.co.uk. And if you Google, you would easily come up with, um, the name would come up and you can contact me. Okay, can I ask you just to say it again, but just a little bit more slowly, because it's obviously a, a very important service, and we just want to make sure that they get the right information. Okay, if you go onto Google and just type in polished manners, polished it should manners. come up. Yes, polished manners. Yes. Right. Okay, that's fantastic. Great. Okay. And so the programs that, that you offer, are they day programs, half a day, or do they vary? Okay, um, I often offer one day programs, um, whether for adults or, or children. Um, strangely enough, this summer we are trying to offer a two day program for. Um, children up to age 11 and then for teenagers up to age 17 so we're going to trial a two-day program but normally most of the programs are one day and it's a full day and we would provide a three-course meal so that we can really practice the dining etiquette element of it oh, wow. and people go away with a lot of information especially the adults oh I thought I knew 
how to do this or I thought I knew how to do that. And so everybody learned something yeah. from, from attending a, a course. So it's really useful to everybody, not just the young people. It sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> well, I, I certainly enjoy it. And most people that come, they do, they do enjoy it because we, we, it's a practical um, training, not that you're sitting down and you're just being presented. So yeah. even we, we cover things like walking up and down a staircase, there's a correct way in terms of carrying yourself gracefully and how to sit, how to stand when you're walking. So there's so many things that we take for granted until it's pointed out. <laughs> Right, gosh, I sound like I might need some polished manners. <laughs> I'll be glad to have you. <laughs> I'll be glad to have you, definitely. <laughs> well, it's been fantastic talking to you, Laura, and I'm sure your story will inspire others because although you said, you know, your children are, are much older now, they're all, they're all grown up, but you're still helping, you're still helping parents, you know, within the community in terms of support your service doesn't just you know focus on it on a, like a, a technical business it's, a, it's about the family as well and, and helping them to grow and to you know grow gracefully with, with so it, it, it is it's it's a passion of mine i really love to see young people particularly doing well having confidence yeah. and it's just just really really great i work with a school a group of year tens just yesterday um, in, a, in a school in Birmingham and the feedback literally I think is, is just been the best thing for all the effort getting up at 3.30 a.m. on Wednesday morning to go to Birmingham but the feedback was just brilliant so things like that just really make it worthwhile to see the difference yes. it's making to, to yes. young people's lives yes yeah. thank you so much well thank you it's been wonderful <laughs> and I'm sure as a result of this interview you'll get Many mothers from our community, our inspiring mothers and business community, come to me for, for further information. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye bye. <laughs>